In the previous tutorial, we learnt about mocking, why mocking is not sufficient always and why and how should we use stubs. We are going to learn that in this tutorial. In the previous video, we learned that if a function has no impact on the calling function, then we should use mocks. That means we should totally ignore that function call. But there is a possibility that a function is returning something that we are using in the calling function. So in that case, should we really need to call that function or we can use stubs? Stubs means we can assume that it is returning some particular value. For example, call another function. So this function is calling this method add. Now, does it matter what is happening inside add method? It could be possible that there is an Ajax call in it. It could be possible there is a set interval in it. So should we really wait or should we really bother about what's happening inside add? We just want a response from this method that we should use to test our method, right? So we need to assume just like we used to do in mathematics, assume that X is an even number. And then on the basis of that, we used to prove rest of the theorem. So similarly, what we will do using stubs, we will assume that whenever we are going to call this function, it will return us a specific value. And on the basis of that, we will write our test case. Let's see how we do that. Then we will be better able to understand it. Let's first of all skip this test suit and, uh, and let's create one more test suit for stub. And the test case is stub the add method. Let's get rid of this as well. For this also, we will use Synon. So let's create a stub using Synon library, synon.stub. So we want my OBJ's method add to be stubbed. And what we want that if we call this with argument 10 and 20, then it should return say 100 it doesn't matter whether we are calling it with 10 and 20 and according to the actual program it should return as 30 but we want that when we call it with 10 and 20 we are assuming that it will return 100 sorry it should be returns let's save it now let's call it as well expect my obj dot call another function with 10 and 20 to be equal 100 and save it let's run it npm run test 5 pending oh we need to remove the skip let's run it now again and one test case is passing to check whether we are doing the right thing or not let's change it to 1000 save it and run it again now the test case is failing because it is saying that the expected is 1000 but the actual is 100 so i hope you are getting this concept that we have overridden the actual function with an assumption so we have stubbed or you can say we assumed that whenever this function add whenever add will be called with 10 and 20 it will return us 100 instead of 30. now there is one more thing that you can do that it is possible that on the first call on first call it should return 100 and on second call it should return say 200 now let's see what do we have here so we are going to call this twice so on the first function call we are expecting it to be 100 and next time we are expecting it to return us 200 let's save it and let's run the test case okay it is passing to validate it let's 
change it to 1000 and this one to 2000 save it and let's run it again and it is failing why because it is saying that expected is 1000 and actual is 100 let's change this to 100 save it and let's run it again again failing because now in the second statement it is expecting 2000 but actually it is returning 200 so that's why it's failing so it should be 200 over here and then it should work you can visit synonjs.org website and under stuff section you can see what all different options available that you can use to write better unit test cases so that's it from this video in the next video we will talk about how to unit test promises